Well, good morning. Still a bit nippy here in the UK. John Fuller here. I'm going to do another video for you, which can be found on my YouTube channel, uh, John Fuller Artist. Um, this one is going to be um, a video, a painting with The Hake. Um, Ron Ranson was a very, very famous artist um, and I knew him some 25 years ago. I met him when I went to his home in Lydney in Gloucestershire, which is about 70 miles from here. Um, I was invited up there for uh, a two-day session, as we all artists, we all go to other people and see how they work. And it's very interesting and you pick up things. Anyway, I went to Ron Ranson and Ron Ranson was really the person who put the hake uh, into the public artist's eye. Uh, he was very adept with it. Um, he only used actually three brushes and that was um, the hake, his very famous hake, which is this is one of Ron Ranson's pro art hakes. Uh, he used um, a rigger and he used uh, a three quarter flat. And that really was all the brushes he ever used. He always said that you could do it most things with the hake um, with a little bit of enhancement from the other two, other three. Uh, as I said, I, I met Ron, um, who was um, a good artist in his own right. Um, however, um, he really excelled himself uh, with his authorship. And he wrote lots of very interesting and well put together books um, on other artists like Edward, S Edward Wesson, uh, Seeger, um, and the Impressionists throughout the world and through France. Um, and he was well known for this. He died about uh, four or five years ago now, unfortunately. Lovely guy and um, very unassuming. Quite a showman when he was teaching. Um, I knew him when he wore a patch over one eye, um, which when he um, uh, met Darlis, his wife, his late wife, um, she insisted um, that uh, uh, he removed it. So from then on, he went. I went on a on a um, an, another uh, visit with him in 2004. Uh, we went to Lipsy um, in in the Greek islands, and I painted with him there. Um, and he uh, we came to an agreement. I, I didn't really want to sit and learn painting, so I used to go off um, into the countryside painting on my own during the day, and then on the condition this was from Ron, that I came back at half past four in the afternoon and he would critique my work in front of everybody else's, which I thought was all a bit of fun and all a bit of a joke. Anyway, I'm going to um, create a painting um, of uh, Corfe Castle, which is down in Dorset. Um, and uh, this will be done, as I say, with these three brushes and no more. And you'll see that, in fact, um, they can be worked very well. Anyway, we'll see you along um, when we get into this painting in a minute and uh, uh, see how we go. Thanks very much indeed. Right, well, here we are. I'm going to attempt this uh, small sketch of uh, Corfe Castle in Dorset. <clears throat> um, but before I start it, I just want to emphasize to you about the hake. I've got two hakes here. Uh, one is one I use all the time, which is this one. And on the left is another one, which is a still a pro art by Ron Ranson, um, but in its virgin state. When I say virgin state, I mean that the actual bristles, as you can see, the one on the left is all bushy. It's dry. This one's dry. There's all bushy. And a hake never works properly until it's got something like two, three, four months work into it. So what Ron used to do, and this is one that I've done, what Ron used to do would be to trim the hake. And what he used to do, he would wet it with clear water, like that. And then he would get a, a, a razor blade or a, a, um, a knife, very, very sharp knife. And he would just trim just above 
the wood across and up. And what he would do, he'd take off all the surplus hairs and do it on both sides. So you end up with a hake that's as sharp as that. I don't know whether you can see that in the, uh, in the video, but it's absolutely sharp. It's nearly razor sharp. Um, what you will also encounter with a hake, because it's mostly goat hair, is the fact that you get a lot of um, hairs that come out. Don't worry about that. They can be taken off uh, at any time. Um, another thing uh, is, um, as I say, we're using three brushes, the hake, a flat, and a rigger. Um, get them in there to soak. Right, another thing that not many people realize um, is that when you're working with a hake, you need what Ron used to call a brake. Now, a brake is a piece of toweling, okay? Because when you actually, um, the, the hake itself holds a hell of a lot of water. So once you've got the color on, you just tap it on the towel and you get, all, you get a, take the surplus water off so it doesn't flood. A useful tip if you're using the hake and actually not many people realize um, how easy it is just to wet the brush, pick up your color and just tap it on a towel. Okay, let's get into this. Um, I'm going to do um, a, a fairly light sky um, with a few clouds. And although it's still cold here in England, UK, I will take my gloves off. <laughs> um, that's better. Doesn't look quite so parochial, does it? Okay, let's mix up a bit of colour here. But I'm going to start off by putting a bit of blue here and there. And then a bit of warmth. Basically dirty water with a bit of raw sienna put in it. And then we'll pick up and soften these edges. the angle a little bit as I say when you're working with a hake with a sky you're going to work fairly quickly get in get out and leave out so there's the basic now I'm going to add a little bit of cloud into it which I shall add a little bit of titanium white to it just to Give it a little bit of base. The beauty with clouds really is to let them work themselves. Right, another tip for you is when you're doing a sky with a, with a hake you're going to get a fair bit of water on it. So try and pick up the bead with a rigger or whatever have you to stop cauliflower edging coming up because it will dry from the top down and as it gets down lower when you get to this lower ridge that will bleed back up if you've got too much liquid there okay let's move on the sky is now dry enough a little bit of hard edge here which I might take out later but I don't know I'm now going to put in the mid ground 
and the foreground um, in um, a wash basically with raw sienna grass is never green um, that and here in the immediate foreground just a slight darker color on this slope graduation Just remember drag your brush in the direction that the ground is going again on the foreground this gives counter change when it's dry dark against light light against dark lovely lovely graduated gray okay I think that will that will do Just picking up the bead on the bottom of the paper. So I don't want bleed back. Right, I let that dry. putting in a little bit of the distant hill um, in a mudgy greeny brown
I think you can see how delicate you can be um, with the hake. Once it's been trimmed. Okay, now we're going to leave all that to dry right out and to blend in. Right, it's not quite dry yet, but I will tell you this, that I don't like using a hairdryer. A lot of people do to speed things up. I think when you're demonstrating out and about, you need to do that. But actually, <clears throat> when you're working yourself for yourself, <clears throat> um, it's better to leave the paint to work on the paper basically because I enjoy mixing on the paper so if I actually put the hair dryer on at this stage and give it a squirt of hot air it's going to freeze it it's not going to actually um, blend and it continues to blend for quite a time okay I'm going to swap now to the three quarter inch flat and I'll come back to the rigger uh, to the um, rigger uh, to the hike and I do the trees and I do this area. I'm now going to do the castle. This is the background colour. Which can go all over the castle. All the pieces of stonework. And it's made up of a, um, a warm um, brownie colour with a little bit of red added. And don't worry if you go over other sides of work, you're not doing a photograph. But I'm going to add a, uh, a little something darker again. Keeping a fairly warm colour uh, to get the bases of these uh, uh, walls here to get a bit of variation into them. But not too much. Um, got to be done when everything else is still wet or moist
Okay, I'm going to start putting the darks in now. Um, and I am using a mixture of sepia uh, and granulating black. This is a scene that is often you make a mistake, too much of a mistake, where you're putting the, the darks in in grey. Um, a lot of people use Payne's grey. In this particular scene, it's a warm scene. So in fact, the shadows need to go in in a warm colour. Doing this with the three quarter. It's something that we tend to fuss about with, our shadows, but we sometimes kill the painting, in my opinion, by fiddling about too much and putting too much, too many shadows in. Okay, you're, you're doing an impressionist, so it's all loose. That will lighten right up. This is still damp, I can feel it. As I'm bracing my finger against it, I can feel it's still damp. Just going to soften these edges here because those <coughs> those towers are round. So the shadows you're going to get will be will be graduated. put a little darker in on these openings But I'm going to add a little bit more emphasis to the base of the walls. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to damp the area underneath it. With 
clean water. Like that. And now I can add <clears throat> a little bit of graduation under those walls. Then with the dry brush, just drag off down the slopes. Remember to drag a brush in the direction of the slope. Do the same with this area here. Not too much, not really too much. Okay, I'm going to leave that a little darker into that window area. There are some very, very fine trees down here and they just need to be indicated. That's all. So I'm using sepia with a dry brush. And then, with the rigger, same mixture, fairly dry, just bring up some few branches and trunks from the bottom. Too much. Okay, back to the rigger now. I'm um, going to put these trees in here. Side of the rigger. Uh, I keep saying the rigger, the hake. Side of the hake. Nice strong colour because I don't want to go into it too much. Okay, and over here the same. Add some burnt umber and blue. Let's 
see the blue burned umber. And then as we get to the more shaded areas, darker again, picking colour up on two sides of the brush. That'll do. Now we're going to put some shadow in under that tree. Again, keep it warm.
change to the rigger. Got it right this time. <clears throat> and while that's still wet, just drag some branches up into there. It'll all disappear. Just a little bit now tinkering with the hake. And so again, the rigger. Give a bit of foreground interest here. I do love my grasses. Just beef up this dark under here side of the brush. Again, all these lovely blacks on a wet surface, especially with this new Mars black I'm using, uh, will granulate. I often wonder what pigments Sir Russell Flint used uh, when he was painting. Because if you look at a lot of his work, it's so beautifully granulated. I got an idea that he must have had some somebody making up handmade granulating paint in his watercolours because he obviously painted over and over the same area and while it was still wet. <clears throat> right, I think I can go home now. Don't think we need to do too much more to that. I could look at it when you look at it like in this state you think well if I do that there and if I do this here and I do that there and all of a sudden the painting has lost all its looseness uh, which is what I do I do love loose impressionist paintings so I'm going to absolutely finish that now that is it done <clears throat> and I'm now going to let that dry naturally <clears throat> excuse me and I'm going to come back then and take all the pencil work that I've done. A lot of shading in here, I'm just reminding myself of shadows, etc. I'm gonna take all that out. So thank you for watching, and I will post the finished painting as soon as it is finished.